Good morning. My name is Bernard Adiakwa from the Powerhouse Ministries International. And once again, I'm bringing you the spoken word for today. Today, I shall be looking at the heart of a giver. Over the past few weeks, we have looked at the subject of giving, especially from the foundation of giving to honor God. We have also gleaned some basic truths from Luke chapter 6, verse 38, and established the principles and the laws around giving. How you give your attitude is as important as what you give, whether you give gold, silver, or bronze, and also the quantity or the amount that you give. Basically summed up, there are three things. Number one, you give with a good attitude. Number two, you must give quality, your first and your best. And number three, you must give quantity, sacrificially, and sacrifice a lot. When these basic laws regulating giving are fulfilled, the quality of life generally is much improved. And this doesn't only apply to offerings in a church service, but also to our work ethics and to our service to mankind as we give our time, our effort, our abilities, and our resources. We accept that giving is an initiative. It is a very deliberate, very conscious decision to create a desirable future. It is not an emotional response, so do not wait for a right time and consider the weather. But the onus is upon you to take initiative, to connect to a source of life and supernatural power beyond the act of just meeting a need. What you end up doing is setting in motion a desirable consequence for your future. Because life basically flourishes with giving. And anything that stops giving, stops living. Today we go a step further to look at the example of Jesus Christ, our perfect example. In Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1, it says, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and verse 2, and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. In this verse, we see the blueprint of giving. We are going to follow the example, and we are exhorted to be followers of God as dear children. Our focus is on God's perfect example, how God himself initiates giving, what he does when he gives. And so our example is God. Even if there are no good examples around, even if we are hearing bad stories, we still lift up our eyes and look to God who has given us the perfect example of giving. What does he do? Number one, we read about Jesus Christ giving himself. He's living a lifestyle that is born out of love, which is the nature of God and the manifestation of God. In his giving, you see him identified and a, being a part of his gift. The gift is not isolated from himself. He gave himself. So you see an example of selflessness, not thinking just about himself, but he gave himself for us. It is not enough just to drop a gift and give something. The gift that pleases God is a gift that has you identified with what you give. Your heart follows the gift. You are part of the gift. What you place on the altar is a part of your life that you have placed before the presence of God. The second thing is that he gave himself an offering. So what is the essence of an offering or the meaning of an offering? An offering is a willing, unsolicited, thoughtful, surprise gift that gives pleasure to the receiver. It, an initiative, this is an initiative beyond the law. It is not a demand or an imposition. It is somebody who is willing to give himself voluntarily to God. What we learn about this is that an offering must be willing and it must be voluntary. You are giving it free-naturedly. You are giving it by yourself, voluntarily. The second thing about this verse is the word sacrifice. Where there's a blood imposition and a demand on you beyond your normal, willing, voluntary offering. Usually people cringe and complain, but it is in a sacrifice that life is poured out. Blood is poured out. And because it meets a spiritual requirement, heaven must respond. Wherever there's a sacrifice, a supernatural force is invoked over your life. Sacrifices are a highest level of offering with blood, which provokes supernatural response. Then he says it was a sacrifice to God. We again see a consciousness about this offering. It was not just given arbitrarily. There was a consciousness that I am giving it to God. And I pray that every time we give an offering, whether it's in prayer, whether it's in fasting, whether it's giving monetarily, there'll be a consciousness that what we do is being given and done to God. 
The final thing is that it was a sweet-smelling savor. God was pleased. God accepted the sacrifice. This was a sacrifice that God loved and he accepted it. So we have seen the example of how God himself gives and how Jesus Christ himself was an offering that was acceptable to God. Every creation is wired to give. Remember that. It is in giving that you are useful and justify your existence. When any creation stops giving, it stops living and becomes less useful and therefore it dies. The second thing about giving is that it is the nature of God. God himself gives. He gives himself. He gave his only begotten son. He gives the Holy Ghost to us. And with him, he freely gives us all things. God is a giver. That is his nature. Once you are created in the image and in the likeness of God, we, expect, we are expected to manifest this nature and characteristics of God. I pray that as we grow in God and as we grow spiritually, we will reflect this image. The more we grow in Christ, the more giving will be identified with us. Giving is a law of life. It is an initiative to provoke a response of increase. Giving connects you to a greater force of life. Whatever leaves your hand has not left your life. It only goes to create a future for you and it breaks the cycle of poverty around you. I must say that there's an inexplicable connection between offering and spirits. It's the binding tie that connects your spirit to an unseen power. I want to read a verse from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7, which sums up God's attitude and what God is looking for in a giver. It says, Every man, according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity. Why? For God loves a cheerful giver. What is the requirement that God endears God to somebody when he gives? Is that the person will give willingly and also give cheerfully. Your heart condition reflects in your giving. God wants you to be a giver and not just be involved in an act of giving. So there's a difference between somebody who gives and somebody who is a giver. For example, I play football, but I'll not describe myself as a footballer because I don't identify with it as part of my life. That is the same way I may be involved in an act, but it's not part of my nature and my life. I give, but I also want to be a giver because that is a second nature. That is part of me. I do it willingly. I do it voluntarily. I do it as, as a reflex action because this is who I am as a reflection of who God is in my life. So how do you become a giver? You do it repeatedly and repeatedly and practice it and train till it becomes part of your lifestyle and then you are a giver. This is the person God loves. For God loves a cheerful giver. May we be givers. May we excel at giving as we follow the example of Jesus Christ. I believe that great leadership is born from great giving. For you to be a great leader, you must have a, a heart of giving and giving and giving and giving repeatedly. If we analyze the life of Abraham, David, and Solomon, we see these characteristics and this nature of giving selflessly. I want to look at David as a king who gives his life repeatedly gives his life for the sheep, gives his life to defend Israel against Goliath, gives his life in battle. Even in his offerings, you see the giving nature manifesting. As he's a king, you also see the giving nature manifesting. This is not something that is detached from him, but it's something that is a constant part of his life, even as he grows. In summing up, we see God's nature. How does God give? He gives willingly, for God so loved the world that he gave. It wasn't a demand on him to do it. Unsolicitedly, willingly, he gave his only begotten son. He gives willingly. He gives cheerfully without compulsion and necessity. He gives generously. He doesn't hold back, even though that is his only begotten son. He gives sacrificially, even to a point where it costs him and his son has to die. And he gives his first and best. These are the examples we must all follow as we follow God. I read in conclusion from 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 7. He says, therefore, as you abound in everything, in faith, in utterance, in knowledge, and in all diligence, and in your love to us, see that you abound in this grace also. As we abound in faith, as we abound in prayer, as we abound in the knowledge of the Lord, God expects that in all these things, we will focus also on a giving nature that reflects his glory. I pray that today, may you abound in the grace of giving and release yourself as an offering and a sacrifice to God. 
May you give willingly and sacrificially to honor God and provoke a special dispensation of grace over your life. I'm going to come your way again and continue this series as we imbibe and, and begin to follow God's nature of giving. May we measure ourselves spiritually as we give more and give more and give sacrificially and give willingly according to the law of giving. Why? For God loves a cheerful giver. Peace, shalom, and life to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.